Okay, uh, so here is the presentation. Let me put it on full screen. Okay, okay. so uh, let's get started. First of all, thank you all for taking time out uh, at the end of a, you know, a, a week. Uh, we didn't want to do it on a you know, Saturday or a Sunday because a lot of people have plans for the weekends. So we thought uh, a Friday afternoon, I mean, Friday evening might be a better option. Uh, so, uh, and the whole idea uh, was to do this session because I personally have benefited a lot over the last uh, a few years uh, in my association with uh, Dr. Hitesh uh, Patel. I, I think everybody calls him Hitesh Bhai, or at least anybody who knows him. So before I start with that, let me sort of uh, give you a quick introduction uh, of him. Uh, for many of you, he may not need an introduction, but uh, for others, uh, just quickly, he's a, he's a uh, doctor by profession. Uh, he still uh, does a little bit of practice. Uh, I'm sure uh, because he loves, uh, you know, what he had studied and what he, uh, what he does. Uh, last, I think, 15 years, he's been, uh, you know, more keenly involved in the stock markets. He's, he's been investing and he's, uh, you know, I my association with him has been uh, pretty much for last uh, 10, 12 years. But to be very honest, it's been uh, more close for the last five, six years. Uh, he's uh, a person who I personally, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, love, respect and uh, look up to a lot. Not only is a brilliant uh, investor, he's one of those rare combinations who's a very good investor, who's a very good trader uh, and a very good person, you know, all, all combined together. Not an easy combination to get in life. And uh, my association with him last probably five, six years, my CAGR has gone up five, uh, I mean, around 10% uh, from what I've learned from him. And more importantly, he has regrown his hair after my association. So you can understand, you know, whose <laughs> impact has been more. Right. Uh, and uh, so he's, he's started off with uh, uh, getting inspired by Peter Lynch. And I think over the years, uh, he's been successful in combining a lot of fundamentals with a lot of technicals and he's been doing it very well. Uh, Dr. Hitesh uh, does not have Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. He's, 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 most of the things that he talks about is on uh, Value Picker. Uh, Hitesh's portfolio is the thread that he uh, writes uh, you know, pretty, pretty much every day, I think. Other than that, I am not aware of uh, any other social media i mean i mean hitesh bhai you can clarify but i have not seen him active anywhere else uh, yeah, there is a twitter handle but i don't use it much so not yeah. much use so uh, with that uh, hitesh bhai if you want to talk anything else about you know your background how you uh, uh, you know got where you are today and uh, uh, and then we can start off with the presentation okay yeah, so thank you, Abhishek, for the generous introduction. So at Value Picker, the benefit we have got is that we benefit from each other, try to learn the good things from each other. And uh, I think amongst the top 20, 25 contributors, everybody probably has learned from each other over a period of time. So it's been a very fertile ground for all of us in our learning process. About me, basically, I am a dermatologist by education and used to do government job for almost around 23 years and took my voluntary retirement in 2019. And then I have been focusing more and more on equity investments, which nowadays is my main law. And uh, dermatology practice is restricted to only say one hour a day or something like that not more than that and uh, basically i'm an example of a lay investor getting interested in the stock markets and then being lucky and 
putting in the efforts, reading the necessary books, and then getting on the road to financial freedom, which we all of us want to go to. So that's about my journey. The, the picture on the screen is of Peter Lynch. So basically, he is my Dronacharya and I am his Eklavya kind of relation that we have. And that is the book that got me on my way into equity investments. I would urge everybody interested in equity markets to at least read these books maybe four, five, six times. And most of the situations that Peter Lynch talks about, you will end up finding in the markets. And while mentioning about uh, all his experiences and experiences of various talks in uh, which featured in the U.S. market, you can easily make out that he talks a lot about investor psychology also. And that is probably one of the ways that this detecting the thought and apathy and everything kind of thing rubbed onto me, mainly by reading his book multiple number of times and then observing markets over a period of time. So that is about me and my mentor. So Abhishek, you can go to the next slide. Abhishek, next slide, please. Yeah. So, how do we get those multi-bagger ideas? So, there has to be a source of getting all these multi-bagger ideas. So, it can come from anywhere. It can come from, say, research reports, your fellow investors, advisories, WhatsApp groups. You can run screens. These days, uh, running short of ideas is not a problem. The problem is about filtering them and then latching on to the good ones. So that is the bigger problem these days because we are loaded with a lot of information and then we have to uh, wade through those waters and cut through the clutter and then try to find out the idea. So this is basically about idea sourcing. It can come from anywhere. So it is just a beginning point. So next slide, please, Abhishek. Yeah, so in this presentation, I will be mainly talking about the mental models, uh, which I have come across in a lot of stocks uh, in my journey in riding some multi-baggers over the period of years. So this is a, briefly, this is a blueprint of any multi-bagger that you want to dig deeper. So you once you come across an idea, then... If you know all these mental models, then it becomes easy for you to slot these ideas in which kind of idea this is, whether it is a turnaround or a cyclical company or a growth or a any kind of thing. Yeah, we, are, we are seeing some kind of noise in the background. So this is just the starting point and we need to dig into that idea, do a lot of research and the best source is to dig the com company details is through annual report, conference calls, annual general meetings, scuttlebutt, etc. Vishak, you need to put everybody else on the mute. Yes. Yeah, just hold on. Let me let me mute. I think there's one or two people who unmuted themselves by mistake. Okay, yeah, I think you can go ahead now. Yeah. So these ideas can come to you from any source, but then, then it becomes our responsibility to uh, take these ideas forward and then dig into the company details, etc. What I have described are various mental models that I have till now found useful. And we'll go, th go through them one by one with certain examples wherever possible. And I'll talk about the details as and when we come across that slide. So next slide, please, Abhishek. So when I'm moving on to the next slide, I think there is a lag of, of a few seconds. Yeah, there is a lag. Yes. So the first and most obvious mental model is the consistent growth. So... 
we were quite lucky enough to get these consistent growers back in 2009 10 when we were coming out of a really bad bear market and people were not even very sure whether the market that had started going up is going to go up or again we are going to go down so there's a lot of disbelief during those times and then we were lucky at that point of time that we were getting 20 30 percent cagr grower at 5p 6p those were the times nowadays i think the equity culture has spread a lot so we may not come across such situations too frequently but who knows because markets can go through really bad corrections off and on and many a times we end up getting uh, chances to load up these kind of consistent compounders. So basically these are companies that have got a very long runway for growth. They can grow from anywhere say around 15 to 40 percent CAGR and sources of growth can be anything. It can be a new product, new geography, anything. And in these names it is essential to check the balance sheet of the company the promoter integrity management quality business quality etc and these all you can make out from conference calls annual reports getting some scuttlebutt etc usually these kind of companies if they are growing at 15 20 percent cagr or say 15 to 25 percent cagr you'll have to pay something like 25 to 35 percent pe kind of ratio nowadays sometimes you might get a chance 40 percent cagr is an aspirational target we used to see that in bajaj finance but there is only one bajaj finance you cannot have more than that so i put in a broad number which you can expect in a consistent growth company next slide please consistent growth is something we all know a lot about so there's not much to talk about. These are consistent compounders that a lot of guys talk about. Next model is new promoters. So this is a situation we come across often on every two, three years. So what happens is many a times because the company having somebody is putting on this. Abhishek, you'll have to mute everybody else, I think. So what happens is many a times because of a company specific reason or promoter specific reason, companies suffer because of bad fate or bad headwinds. And then the because of distress kind of situations, you will have a time when private equity starts getting into the company or a particular company gets uh, taken over by another company. So these are often a very fertile ground for uncover. Hitesh bhai, just one second. You please unmute yourself. One second. Did that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So this is a situation where a new promoter comes into a company in whatever form. The new promoter can be in the form of a private equity guy, another set of promoters, whatever. But this happens because the company has run into trouble because of whatever reason. And many a times this happens after there has been a drastic uh, correction in the stock price. So this is something that you can... Uh, uh, that you can utilize as a mental model. So, because here what happens is after all this shit is settled, the focus shifts to the business and growth. The new promoters are there to take the company on a proper course and they'll focus more on business. They'll bring in new professional fund, uh, managers to run the business. There'll be a whole new thing going around the company. So some of the examples we have seen over the years is JB Chemical. So that, that was a company which was run by three very old aged people, probably the founder members of the company. And they were getting on in age. They were all, all three brothers were 80, 85 years of age. Next generation, I don't know, maybe they were getting into the business or they were not interested, whatever. The company had fantastic products very good uh, geographic distribution also in their business but it was not going anywhere and then a private equity guy comes in and the stock price has gone up three four times after that 
another example is sl propex so earlier it used to belong to the z group it used to make the lamy tubes that we use in colgate and it again is a global leader in the product that it makes so there also i think the stock price had gone down to 70 80 kind of rupees and then new promoters got into it and some of my friends got into this company and made double their money within 2 3 months of the takeover that happened biggest example one of the ones that i missed big time was cg power so cg power was a division of crompton greaves now crompton greaves was run by the thapar group which was not much interested in running the business and there were two divisions one of them was the cg consumer and the other was the transformer kind of business which was merged of as cg power and i remember the stock price i think was around 25 rupees and then murugappa group came into it and uh, they bought the stake at around 20 25 rupees and currently i think the stock price is close to 500 rupees now at 25 rupees we had nothing to lose and murugappa group coming in just that fact actually i think for some market veterans like us was enough to be able to load up but somehow we missed this one and that's how i remember this example so another example is magma fincorp which was a lending company which was not going anywhere and once punawala the vaccine guy he he was loaded with money and he wanted to acquire a business and he latched on to this uh, magma fincorp so after that it was named as punawal punawala finance and i think the stock price since then has gone up from 50 70 bucks to around 700 rupees currently the recent example is a uh, stake of barmans into everready you will continue to have these kind of examples of and on this is a mental model that will keep on repeating every year to year not all of them will become successful but at least if you have these things at the back of your mind then you will be able to dig deeper into this model next slide abhishek yes so the, the the next model we will be talking about is new management so here the promoters may be the same but the guys who are running the company will be different so many times what happens is one generation of a promoter family takes retirement brings in a either his son or son in law or somebody close to them or maybe all together a professional management to run the company so that what that does is it brings us brings a professional focus into the company there's a fresh energy into the company and a new new management comes in with a new set of ideas on how to run the business so prime example of that is aishar motors so siddharth lal came into the company and bullet was there even before siddharth lal, lal joined the company but bullet was not a great product at that point of time but once this guy got in he improved the product of Uh, product profile of bullet and now it is almost uh, an aspirational product amongst the youngsters so a recent example was in time techno where the earlier promoter uh, agarwal family had one of the guys running the company and fortunately or unfortunately passed away and then the new guy came in he is named bharat vagheria and immediately he came in he started talking about reducing debt focusing on roe then selling off of, uh, of uh, overseas non profitable subsidiaries and the results kept coming in every quarter so the subsidiary sale is still awaited but the company is on track and the stock price since then has gone up from say around 85 to 145 bucks till now maybe there's more we will have to see how things go ahead but the big trigger in this company will be the overseas subsidiary sale so they have three geographies wherein they have subsidiaries and in the chairman speech they have mentioned that they are close to a deal in two of the overseas geographies so that is an example about time technoplast alambic and ajanta are examples where next generation of the promoter family took the company to new heights netco we all know about the example rajiv nanapaneni focused a lot on oncology and then the stock price has gone up from say 60 80 bucks to currently around 800 850 it does have its hiccups off and on because that is the kind of mental model that uh, rajiv wants to focus on so but 
every now and then he comes up with a blockbuster product that that tends to uh, give philip to the stock price next slide please abhishek next model is balance sheet clean up so usually what happens in any kind of turnaround company which is laden with debt the first sign of turnaround will be taking care of debt whenever a company uh, talks about turning around first try to focus on what they are doing about the debt in the balance sheet or any other kind of problem that they are having in the balance sheet or any any lagar division of the business that is there so what they are planning to do that and these days when promoters do all the conference calls and everything they will let you know about what their plans are and you can follow the those promises from quarter to quarter and many a times they are manifested in announcements also so one of the examples is sale of uh, assets so how, how does a um, uh, company get funds to reduce the debt so one of them is fund infusion so usually promoters some marquee investors will get into preferential allotment mode and uh, get funds to the company because these people will invest only if they are they are confident about the business turning around because it's everybody's hard earned money so they'll not uh, put it just like that so that is something to focus on but don't get carried away by only this model because many a times what happens is investors are taken for a ride in the name of preferential allotment so you have to make sure that you are looking at the right company whenever we are talking about this mental model so one of the examples we saw was in usha martin so this was a business where two two cousins were at war so prashant jawar and rajiv jawar were cousins who had inherited the stake in the company and the company used to have a commodity steel business and wire ropes business and ultimately what happened was rajiv jawar landed with the control of the company he was of the view that he wanted to sell off the commodity business and focus on the wire ropes business that proved to be beneficial to the company so they sold off the uh, commodity steel business to tata steel at i think around 4200 crores and wiped off almost all the debt and whatever funds they put in they put in into wire ropes business which was again a very high roi business and where the company had a sort of global leadership and then 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 the rest is history the stock price i think has gone up nearly four times from 80 90 kind of levels to currently 340 350 so that is one example another example is of kamath hotels so kamath hotels was stuck with a non performing property in pune and that that property went into default and icici uh, people took hold of the property then it took a lot of time for icici guys to dispose of the properties but till that time that property used to sit on the balance sheet of kamath hotels as a sort of debt and once that was disposed of kamath became totally asset light and then good times returned to kamath hotels also here i think the stock price went up from 40 50 bucks to more than 200 rupees so that is another example Uh, some other examples we are looking at is sale of loss making subsidiary so which we have seen in time technoplast technograft industries is another example but in the recent agm the management is talking about turning around the uh, textile division rather than selling it off so maybe we will have to give it some more time and see how things go jain irrigation again is talking big about debt, debt reduction uh, they already brought the debt down from around say 5000 kind of 5000 crore levels to 3600 crores and in in the latest conference call they have been talking about reducing this debt by another 600 crores during fy24 so we now need to see uh, how things go but th that is something that we can monitor so jain irrigation is another example next next slide abhishek so another mental model that we'll talk about is value migration this, this actually is a concept that has been popularized by a book written by andrew slewotsky uh, i think it's available free also on if you google it i 
but basically it is it's a book written by him and the concept has been popularized by ramdev agarwal of motilal oswal so basically what this means is this is a flow of economic and shareholder value from the obsolete to new business models we all know the kind of service we used to get with psu banks so you go from this table to the next table next table you go that guy has gone out to lunch and then you you have to wait for half an hour those kind of things and with the advent of all these new age private banks the services improved a lot and people started shifting their accounts to all these new age banks the earliest amongst them were hdfc bank kotak bank and we know the stock price of all these banks have gone up maybe 500 to 1000 times over 20 25 years and and they, these banks have made billionaires out of retail investors also so nowadays there are a lot of private banks so this age has been reduced a little bit but the same kind of model you can see uh, going ahead also in other sectors also so this is something to keep at the back of the mind uh, the other model is from un- unorganized to organized there is a typing mistake here so once titan came into the jewelry business uh, a lot of people shifted to buying jewelry from titan because they were getting some kind of guarantee about the gold quality about the product quality even the repairing also was guaranteed by titan people that if somehow some kind of jewelry was damaged you can go to any titan showroom anywhere in india and you are assured of service there maybe they can take one or two days but your product will be repaired as soon as they can the other is lifestyle changes so earlier uh, i don't know how many of you remember but earlier the underwear used to be the the nada wala underwear kind of thing now once people started getting richer richer they wanted to get better products and page industries came out with this jockey brand of underwear which was a lot of comfort to crucial areas of the body so uh, the product caught on and the quality has not diminished at all in in case of page industries there, there have been a lot of competitors say rupa is there lux industries is there but the product quality does not match page industries jockey quality plus the management antics also does not match page industries so that is something that is important we have to watch so stock price i remember page industry used to quote around 300 bucks in 2008 crash currently i think it's almost 10 12 times from there no big shakes but uh, it had also gone up to 6000 kind of levels also for us the re- recent example has been emerging platform companies like zomato and policy bazaar etc so zomato is a company which has addressed an unmet need of the lo- lot of population most of us are fond of eating and we want to eat a specific product from a specific restaurant but we are not ready to go to that restaurant wait there in the line or whatever and go ahead with the traffic and all those things so zomato we know i don't need to introduce what zomato does everybody uses it and i've been seeing the growth even in my own home say my son used to order it say once a week and now it's almost three four times a week i myself use it quite frequently and it's a very user friendly uh, platform so one of the concepts where professor bakshi talked to us about evaluating any business model was about the uh, environment surrounding the company it has to be a win win situation for all the participants concerned so in case of zomato look at the kind of uh, situation that is there so as a customer i am very happy putting putting in my thumb over the product that i use then the delivery boys they are they they are practically unemployed young people who go ahead and deliver these products they get money from zomato people also they get tips from happy customers also so they are a happy lot restaurant people were not finding enough business so they are also a happy lot and zomato itself obviously is a happy uh, happy company because they have got everything lined up for everybody same thing goes for policy bazaar so this is a very happy ecosystem kind of business where all the participants involved in the business are happy except maybe 
shareholders who have bought at the top. So we cannot do anything about them. So in US, this example was there of Amazon, Netflix, etc. So this is the concept of value migration. Next slide. So it is why while we move to the next slide, the one uh, addition, page industries yeah. is now around 39, 40,000 rupees. Yeah. <laughs> 2008, it used to be 300, 300, yeah. So I missed one zero. Ah, exactly. <laughs> next slide, Abhishek. Ah. You can see the next slide? No. This is Ram S's whiteboard has come in. Akoli. Akoli. Yeah, so now. It is why you need to unmute yourself once more. So, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So, the next model is about ancillary plays. So, this is basically the pick and shovel model that uh, Peter Lynch talked about. He talked about the gold rush that happened in the US where the, the guys that were prospecting for gold did not make much money because they either found gold or did not find gold. But uh, the guys who so used to supply jeans and all the, all the shovels and pick and X, X and everything, they ended up making a lot of money. So this is basic model about ancillary plays. So, any fancied sector, these days we, we tend to see a fancied sector every two, three months, four months. And then the next thing we can figure out is which is the sector that is going to benefit a lot out of this sectoral fancy. So one of the sectors we were lucky enough to figure out pretty early on was uh, the chemical sector. So chemicals, a lot of chemical companies had started running a lot back in 2020, 2021. And we started figuring out which are the companies that are going to benefit out of this whole sectoral tailwind. And th there are two major companies which are benefiting, which were GMM, Fodler, and HLE Glass Court. So these used to make glass-lined vessels. And at that point of time, they I, in fact, attended the AGM of both these companies because these were near to the place where I reside. It is uh, at Karamsad, which is hardly 30, 40 kilometers from Baroda. And both the companies management was talking about uh, full order books and very good prospects and everything. And the stock prices had not run up all that much. But uh, there was this positive vibes that you could easily make out after attending the AGM. So, and then the stock price, we know what kind of run this stock price stocks had. So the GMM, I think, ran from 1000 to 7000. Actually, Glasscoat, in fact, did even better. It ran from, say, 180 kind of levels to 7,000 kind of levels. I, I used to track actually Glasscoat, but the problem was getting, even if I had to buy 1,000, 2,000 shares, it was an effort. So I, I became lazy and stopped buying it and then missed the whole thing. But if you are persistent enough, you can buy these stocks over a period of time. It doesn't matter even if you buy 10, 20 bucks higher also. If you catch the theme properly, then uh, you end up making money, a lot of money, in fact. Next is about Exide and Amar Raja. So these are the two companies which are uh, ancillary plays for auto industry that is currently fancied. You can see a lot of auto stocks at 52-week highs, all-time highs. And two major names that supply batteries to all these auto companies are Amar Raja and Exide. Now, we have seen this uh, auto boom since almost one, one and a half years now coming out of COVID. So there is something called a battery replacement cycle also. So every three, four years, your battery needs to be replaced. So the, again, it will come down again to it is either Exide or Amar Raja. Plus, whenever this EV theme catches full fire, the major manufacturers of EV batteries, I think, are going to be Amar Raja and Exide only because at a scale, these two companies will only be able to produce a lot of batteries whenever a huge surge of battery demand comes around. Chlorochem is a theme on 
uh, again on electric vehicles where they are going to start a plant on LIPF6 which is going to be battery chemicals and they their product is used in renewable energy also so that can be a thing that can be considered greaves cotton again so greaves it's by itself was uh, traditionally a diesel engine manufacturer for the likes of atul auto and everybody and then uh, at some point of time the management thought that they want to go into fuel agnostic mode so they did not want to depend too much into uh, diesel engines so they went into electric vehicle manufacturing two wheelers three wheelers and we can see a lot of these ampere showrooms which belongs to this group so abhishek is running ahead of time so he has got this spin offs on uh, on our uh, board so i'll talk about spin offs so what happens is many a times big companies high off very small small divisions from their own company because that is not a focus area for that particular company and then the management wants to take it out as a separate company put a different set of management or maybe even sell off that company and if enough focus is there on running that particular smaller company then also a lot of wealth can be created but here the process of value discovery in the markets is pretty slow and so probably that is an opportunity for us retail investors because large funds initially have to sell off these small spin offs because they do not meet the market cap criteria of the uh, say mutual fund say a big mutual fund cannot hold companies less than say 5000 crore market cap or 10000 crore market cap if it is a large cap focused company uh, mutual fund so the, it is uh, it is uh, the compulsion of the fund manager even if he knows that it's a good company he has to sell it off just to meet the guidelines of fund management so that often provides us an opportunity of evaluating that company see how it it is and then if if we are convinced that we can buy it so but here conviction very high conviction is needed because many a times the stock price will not move for long periods of time because not many market market participants are ready to analyze that kind of company information is not there totally the track record of that particular spun off division is not there for many years so it takes a lot of conviction so we have got examples in the form of at the pharma lab which was spun off from uh, at the industries so now at the industries has over the years been a huge wealth creator and uh, at the pharma was demerged from that company uh, again another example is at the surfactant so at the surfactant makes surfactants which are used in shampoos soaps etc so at the surfactant had a great time post the demerger when the chemical boom was going on the stock price had gone up i think to around 1800 kind of levels currently it has corrected to 600 650 kind of levels the product that it makes caters to a very stable industry which is the fmcg kind of industry so if this company can get its act together and there's this good management behind it this is a company which needs to be watched Another example is Five Paisa, which was demerged from IIFL. Epigral is the name of the demerged entity from Meg Money. So Epigral went up three times within uh, uh, list within demerger within only a few months only. So this is a model that you can use off and on because not many investors are focused on these kind of investments. So it provides an easy ground. So. you can also read the spin offs uh, chapter of peter lynch in his book he has given a lot of examples also next slide please <laughs> next model is margin improvement so uh, this is more applicable to countries uh, companies which have got a huge turnover say companies which have got a turnover of say 5000 crore 10000 crore 20000 crores and if there is even a slight improvement in margin say 0.5% 1% 1.5% margin improvement in a 10000 crore turnover company amounts to a lot of profit so how does this happen so this happens because of whatever change in in a business model that the management can bring about so this can often happen because of say change in distribution model so one of the intermediaries the uh, the management might decide to remove they are paying say 1% to that intermediary 
that immediately runs into the bottom line. If management is confident that business is not going to suffer while doing so, they can get away with it. So that is one way. There are many other models where they can focus. Cost cutting is one of the models. So there are different ways in which uh, companies can improve margin. They, one of them is focusing on more profitable products. So we have got an example of uh, McDowell's. So this is a Daru making company. And what they have done is they have started focusing on their premium products since past three, four years now. And they, they have uh, defocused on the tail end products. So the premium products carry higher margins for the company and they don't need to advertise too much also. So anybody fond of drinking high quality whiskey is not going to go down the, the curve. So he'll, he'll keep on buying the same brand. So it becomes easy for the management. Again, Titan also earlier was only a watch company with the introduction of jewelry. The sales also improved, margins also started improving. And the rest, I think we know the stock price is history. One small example we focused on was Kirloskar Ferris. So basically this company used to have predominantly revenues from pig iron which was the main business of the company and a smaller division was there of uh, value added products which used to cater to auto ancillary and over a period of time they started increasing the contribution from the value added products and i think as recently as one or two years back they took over a company called ismt which was a sick company but the full name of the company is indian seamless metal tubes so what this company does is it uses the pig iron kind of product and ultimately ends up producing seamless tubes, which is a much higher margin product. So these are the companies which end up creating a lot of wealth for the shareholders. For the purpose of uh, time, I have focused only on a few examples on each and every slide. But if you think about it very closely, you will find plenty of examples in all these kind of things. Next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so this is what we are experiencing in the current market, industry tailwind. So this is usually the flavor of the season kind of mental model. And we have been enjoying this thing since we came out of COVID because before COVID, it was only quality, quality, quality all the time. Now quality, I think, seemed to have run its course. And uh, welcome to the new world of industry tailwind kind of investing. So first of all, we had... Pharma uh, tailwind kind of thing immediately coming out of COVID. This was the first sector that came out of the correction. And we saw a large part of the gains being garnered by the bulk drug manufacturers, the API players. And this was mainly because of shortages that happened because of the COVID led uh, problems. So we, can, we have seen a lot of companies, RT drugs, Newland Laboratories, Loras Labs, going up multifolds within one, two, three years. So that was the first thing. Next in line was chemicals. So uh, the pollution control norms that happened in China led to a lot of disruption in production of chemicals. That led to a lot of shortages and a lot of chemical stocks started going up like crazy. We have seen chemical stocks go up five, ten times within two, three years. But uh, here again, we have to know that this is a shortage led bull run. Once the shortages go away, then you are back to square one. Again, if, if there are no shortages, then chemical becomes a commodity business. So th then, then you'll have long wait if you think that you have bought into quality kind of company. Chemicals are not quality companies. Only a few of these chemical companies which have got niche or which have got scale will qualify for long-term investment. Rest of them fall into the flavor of the season kind of investment. So there is an exit time for all these companies. I think a lot of people miss the exits in chemicals and they are still stuck with a lot of chemical stocks bought at very high levels. So I don't know what advice they should be given. Because by the time the fancy for one sector finishes, the fancy for another sector already is in the works. So you have to be on your toes if you are into this kind of investment. Defense again, make in India, the slogan given by our PM. 
so that that played right into the defense sector and we have seen a lot of winners from defense also earlier also there was a lot of talk about make in india and everything but this time it was for real and the government focused a lot on make in india and they were quite strict that defense procurement will be from companies which make in india only and all those kind of things so a lot of companies but a lot of money railways again we see government expenditure a lot of government expenditure going into railway infrastructure so a lot of railway stocks have gone up a lot still going up we don't know how long these tailwinds are going to last but then people ended up making a lot of money financials was an example of demonetization benefiting all these financials because during demonetization what happened was all the money that was locked away in the lockers and all they, that had to be deposited into the banks and banks got money at very cheap rates of maybe what 3 4 5% savings rate of interest for long periods of time and they they could lend at higher rates and once the demonetization side effects went away there was this huge growth in the economy because a lot of money was pumped into the actual economy rather than the black market and credit demand also swelled a lot so during those periods i think financials did very well i think that was the time before 2018 or something like that 2016 to 18 demonetization i think happened in 2017 next was ev theme so a lot of auto ancillaries and autos etc have benefited and probably will benefit going ahead also based on these ev theme we still see a lot of electric vehicles uh, in in two wheelers three wheelers and you and if you see every company is coming out with electric vehicle ev kind of uh, car also so that is a model that is a mental model that probably will play out longer also care has to be taken that you don't overpay and don't get carried away by the stock price in these kind of examples uh, another example can be infrastructure so government is spending a lot of money in making roads making ports making airports you name it everywhere government spending and not all the products projects will be catered to by government companies so, so a lot of this good quality infrastructure companies we already i think see a lot of infrastructure companies quoting at multi year highs currently also and i think probably they'll go up even higher from current levels also so that is one theme i think that is actually alive in the market as of now i think a lot of stocks have run up so they might take a pause also but after that whichever company is good in execution good in maintaining their balance sheet uh, they will be the winners sugar was a prime example of the ethanol theme playing out so sugar by itself is a very very commoditized product but once the government declared its intent of increasing the ethanol mixing into the petrol that we get so these companies had a got a definite revenue stream and use the cyclicality of the business so sugar has outperformed since almost 2 years now and again there's a lot of talk of ethanol theme going ahead also the only spanner in the works can be if at a point of time electric vehicles take over big time then the whole ethanol theme i think will be left behind but that that theme i think thing still seems to be a few years away so in all kind of flavor of the season kind of investments we have to go for a basket approach so you buy two or three of the best of the companies of the lot and buy two three of the laggards make a basket of this and try to ride the theme and many a times the laggards end up making more money for you but you are not very sure about how exactly things are going to play out so it's always better to have a basket approach next slide please abhishek and before you start hitesh bhai you need to unmute yourself sorry because if there is some background noise i am having to mute all and
No, Hitesh bhai, you need to unmute yourself. No, Abhishek, is the previous slide of turnaround or it comes after this one? Eight minute, let me check. Still go back. Uh -huh. Turn yes, around. Yes. Yeah, this one. So turnarounds can be a big wealth creator if you know how to find a successful turnaround company. And a lot of money can be made in this. Again, I'll guide you to Peter Lynch's book. So he has given a whole roadmap of how to uncover a successful turnaround company. But uh, for the sake of our presentation, I think uh, <clears throat> the mostly successful turnaround example is of a survivor company of a sector in pain, say a steel, steel sector going through severe pain due to say downturn in economy or whatever may be the reason. So whichever the three or four good companies are going to remain in the sector are going to survive probably they'll end up getting a bigger market share during the upturn in the industry because three or four or five of the poor quality companies are going to go bankrupt. And th this happens in almost all the sectors. And once the turnaround happens, there is a street lag of say one, two, three quarters. Many times what happens is a turnaround company will start reporting good numbers. Markets will ignore these good numbers for maybe one or two quarters and then take notice of these companies. So this is a this is the time where we should study the company, do some work, and if we are convinced about the successful turnaround, then we should go ahead and buy those companies. So this street lag is important in uh, working around with turnarounds. So coming to the examples, we have got example of Renuka Sugar. So earlier, uh, Management was the Murkumbi family, which went into a lot of uh, uh, expansion, unrelated expansion. Abhishek, you need to unmute, unmute this Gunachekaran guy. One second. Okay, I think you can go ahead. Yeah. So Renuka Sugar was in troubled waters. They had a Brazilian subsidiary and all kinds of problems. Then suddenly this Wilmar group from Singapore, which is a big player in all these commodity products, came ahead and bought Renuka Sugar, restructured a lot of debt and everything. And I think I remember the stock price was around 8 to 10 rupees. Currently, I think it's around 50, 55 bucks. Of course, the sugar sugar rally has also helped the company, but I think it is one of the biggest producers of ethanol and going ahead also, who knows if they get get the act right, then they can benefit a lot out of even the ethanol thing. Suzlon is the current example of a turnaround. There's a lot of talk about debt restructuring happening in the company and a lot of fancy targets also are being talk, talked about. So Suzlon Beach used to quote at around say 5 10 bucks currently i think around 25 30 rupees and i hear a very lofty targets in these names i am not very sure whether th th that thing can happen or not but currently what happens is suzlon is benefiting from the renewable theme also so these days there's a lot of uh, sectoral fancy for renewable companies and so suzlon is one of those the other examples is of say HCC, Hindustan Construction Company. So again, this was a company which was involved in this Lawasa project and it was a never ending story for that company. And then what happened was management started focusing on debt and they started talking about reducing debt. Part of the story, I think they have, they have done some work on debt reduction also. I think more probably should follow. This is a company which one can follow. They do conference calls, etc. So we can go through the conference call, check the numbers in the annual reports or in the presentation and see how things go. Uh, another example was ITD cementation. So that was a company which again ran into trouble because of a few contracts, high, high, low, low margin contracts that it had gotten into. And then once those uh, contracts were run out of their uh, business, the company started doing quite well. Currently, I think it is at a multi-year high. Tips, Saregama are other examples where once the uh, 
platforms like say Spotify etc came into play the the products of these companies which the vast libraries these companies used to possess tips sare gama etc they were able to monetize those assets and that for these companies it straight away runs into the bottom line because they don't have to do anything to produce those assets they are already there lying with these companies it's just that the situation has changed for them suddenly and all this library kind of stuff is getting you money Wabag is an example of a company which is used to, uh, which which uh, is into water desalination plant. Uh, so that also was a turnaround story. We rode it for some period of time, and still it's a work in progress for us. Next slide, Abhishek. Yeah. So cyclical. So this is this is again. There are some people who are very very good at. riding cyclicals so there are certain cyclicals which have got very short cycles so the, these actually steel paper chemicals tires textiles polyfilm etc they have got shorter cycles cement may be slightly longer than all those paper and chemicals hotels autos they have got slightly longer cycle than even the preceding segment but in all these cyclicals a clear exit policy is needed because many many of my friends have inherited tata steel shares from their parents and grandparents and all and they they cannot part with tata steel they think that this is a great company because their grandfather had invested in this company or their father had invested in this company so there is a timeline for exiting these kind of companies healthcare real estate infrastructure they got much longer cycles and the consistent compounder category will come from fmcg top private banks top other financials consumer durables etc these are much less cyclicals see end of the day every business is cyclical it's how you ride it and how long the cycle lasts that is something that you have to figure out and if you can figure out that okay the growth phase for this particular company is getting over or getting close to ever then then i think uh, we have to exit those kind of companies these days i think there is nothing that is there for buy and hold for ever maybe very few companies probably will qualify for those kind of uh, uh, place in your portfolio maybe something like a nestle or a hindustan lever but there also you will have to end your long periods of time of very poor return or no return or even negative return at times but there you have to have a 10 year view 5 year view kind of view point then only you will end up making money next slide please abhishek yes so next is change in perception so basically here what happens is nothing has changed for the company the company remains the same its performance also remains the same it is only the market perception towards that company that has changed many a time this is often followed by good results but at the time when we latch on to these companies we we are just clueless that why are the stock prices of this company going up and there's just nothing that we could make out but then uh, if if you are a trend follower you can ride the trend also so classic example was rec and pfc so for many years i think rec and pfc were only dividend plays they used to have amazing dividend yields 10% 12% dividend yields whenever you bought them and once they got x dividend the stock price corrected back to the level where they started from again the same cycle kept repeating this went on for years i think and once these broke out of their ranges this quickly doubled and tripled in their value so the whole perception towards the government owned companies has changed a lot and a lot of people are still in disbelief they still believe that government companies cannot make money for you or these are not worthy of investments now i am not very sure with this this whether this is a flavor of the season or this is a structural change because you see psu banks many of them have gone up three four times five times within a short period of time so those are the things which we can monitor recent example is that of mukund limited one of the companies i track i don't own it it's in my watch list 
but the stock price has cleared multi year high recently above 162 i think it's all time high and uh, the only thing they did was they merged a group company called mukund engineers limited with mukund limited the rest of the thing the picture is still not very clear there is talk about uh, sale of land parcels etc but still the picture is not very clear but the stock price does indicate that it's at multi year highs and consolidating above multi year highs we'll come to the example later on so i'll talk about that later so one of the important things is multi year breakouts are often associated with disbelief so that i'll talk about when i talk about the examples later on next slide please abhishek yes yeah, so the, this model is about capex company so earlier what happened was during the chemical boom and even around about that time capex used to be an exciting factor for market participants so a company that used to announce a capex of say 300 crores the market cap used to go up by 1000 crores so that was the kind of excitement that these capex companies generated people thought that once a capex capex is announced the it will automatically reflect into numbers but we have to remember that there are always teething problems associated with capex a company going in for expansion will face a number of problems then finance and depreciation cost also is initially very high but once the operations stabilize something called operating leverage comes into play so the same assets if they start producing a higher amount of revenues with the same fixed costs then it it can generate a multiple of profits so a company which is generating sales of 1000 crores at 5% net profit margin if it starts going into 2000 crores sales and the margin improves to 7% you can imagine the kind of profit that profit company is going to end up making so that those are the kind of models we can use in companies which have done capex which have suffered from problems related to capex and then are ripe for the picking so one of the examples we were lucky to get into was loras labs so loras had expanded capacities into formulations and earlier it was only an api player then it went into formulations and then it it had trouble in the formulation space for maybe 2 3 quarters the stock price did not do much and the people were talking down the company that this is not going to be a company which is going to be successful or anything like that. and then suddenly post covid it started experiencing very strong tailwinds shortages also helped this company and the stock price went up 5 6 times within 2 years so another example of capex company so another thing i want to talk about is many of these mental models will fit into a single company at the same point of time also so that is something that we have to remember say a capex company enjoying operating leverage benefits debt reduction benefits or many a times unsuccessful capex company getting taken over by another group those are the kind of things that can happen in the market so all these things sometimes can come together also so we have to be conversant with all these mental models and whenever we analyze a company we should be able to figure out okay this model fits here this model fits here And then the whole picture probably will become even better deepak nitride was an example where they were putting up a huge phenol plant it actually they were uh, shooting above their level in terms of capex it was a very small company earlier but the phenol project was close to 1400 1500 crore worth of project so it was pretty big for a company of the size of deepak nitride earlier but then it successfully uh, started that uh, that plant successfully raised the funds whenever they needed it and the stock price went up 10 20 times within 2 3 years there are acquisition pains in so that, that acquisition also is a form of capex a company takes over another another company and has problems integrating the new company into itself so we have seen that example with mps mps used to take over a lot of small small companies and it had a lot of problems initially where revenues did not flow in or even the margins suffered and recently i think the stock price i think it's gone up a lot in recent times united phosphorus is another company the management is very very fond of taking over companies right left and center 
and i am often worried about the quality of balance sheet in in case of united phosphorus but till date it has survived so maybe at some point of time again it might be worth looking into another capex form is sunken r&d cost so uh, hbl is a typical example where the promoter is a technocrat and the company was into industrial battery industrial battery used to suffer because of over competition and it was not going anywhere but the promoter was very focused he wanted to keep on looking into newer products or improve upon the products that he already had and so he had invested a lot of money into the r and d kind of thing but those r and d costs did not produce much for maybe 7 8 years and then suddenly they had a lot of uh, tailwinds because of this vande bharat and all this government initiatives so that that is something like hbl was saying apna time aayega so that was the time when hbl started firing there's only one quarter of good results behind and the stock price had already i think gone up nearly 3 4 times so and still people are talking a lot about the prospects of the company those who have attended the agm have put up the agm notes on value picker the company has come out with presentation also annual report is also pretty bullish so that is about hbl power next slide please yes yeah, so one model that i think is not very popular is bear market ipos so many times what happens is because of whatever reason some companies have to launch their ipos at some point of time this is often during bear market because what happens is there are certain companies in which private equity players have invested early on during their time and there is a exit time period for all these private equity players if i remember correctly it is 7 years beyond which these private equity players cannot remain invested in these companies so they have to try to find out an exit so it will either be the promoters buying off those private equity players or a ipo kind of thing or some other private equity guy coming in to replace this private equity guy any kind of thing can happen but if these kind of companies come out with an ipo then actually the company is good but the market environment is not so very good so if you can figure out companies that have launched their ipos during bear markets study them very well because there is a lot of time to study these kind of companies bear markets none of the stock prices are going to run up a lot so this time enough to analyze their company do detail work even do scuttlebutt these days it's pretty easy to do scuttlebutt also so and then if you find out a good company then probably you will latch on to a couple of good winners i remember fl fl company because in one of our annual value picker meets we used to we had a uh, an expert from nalanda so he talked about this company where nalanda fund had, had invested sorry it was malabar malabar fund so malabar had invested in fl pre ipo and he was talking a lot about the qualities of the business and all these things and the ipo came in 2019 and in 2020 there was this big bear market so if somebody had listened to that guy i think his name was sumit so fl was there to analyze for a long period of time and then if thought fit people could have invested in this company the stock price had gone up a lot during this platform boom kind of time that we had in the market previously since then it has corrected but i think it still remains a good business to analyze they are into i think internet marketing so anybody who wants to study can go through that company recent example was emi emil electro it is a big uh, electronics retailer which came out with an ipo and during that time the market was a bit dodgy and the stock price was available at attractive prices so one example another was india mart so that was even before that i think this was one of the uh, companies that listed round about the covid times so that was about the bear market ipo so now we are talking about fallen angels so these are companies which are 
fancied companies at one point of time and then suddenly market participants take these companies to exorbitant levels there's a huge build up that is given in narrative to these companies that these are going to touch the sky and the, then the valuations also follow and then after all these kind of manic rallies we all know falls also come very swiftly so what happens is many a time these falls also are overdone they they correct much beyond the, what actually should happen so that provides for attractive entry prices into these companies so we have a very recent example of all these platform companies falling big time so zomato policy bazaar paytm delivery all these were platform companies actually these were the business models that probably are not going to go out of fashion and the most impressed among them is i think zomato i am i'm most impressed with that business model i have yet to see how how they focus on their profitability and how they can take the company from here onwards but uh, if you talk about the dominance in the particular field then zomato and swiggy there are only two players in this food delivery business and with the kind of pain that uh, other business houses have seen with zomato i don't think too many new players will probably come into this field so it will be a duopoly market for these people to exploit and i think it is a market that is going to explode over a period of time next slide please so now coming to a totally different mental model all the earlier models were basically fundamental kind of models we here we focus on technical aspects so these days everybody wants to uh, focus on technicals so a lot of youtube videos are there people teaching technicals lot of new investors also are learning technicals also so multi baggers from technicals i think pretty easy because this is a largely a visual thing that you can see so here the main model is about multi year breakouts two year three year 52 week high five year 10 year 20 year you name it and then there is often a retest and then once the retest is finished and stock starts going up you should join the journey so the the best patterns to follow is rounding bottoms in the early stage of this multi year breakouts or say inverted head and shoulder or double bottom all those are kinds of bottoming formations on long term charts wyckoff patterns if somebody wants to learn it's a very interesting concept i was not very conversant on with this but with the help of one of my friends who is a pediatric neurosurgeon in mumbai i i learned wyckoff and still in the process of learning so it's a very interesting uh, model then another thing is post ipo highs so we are not talking here about bear market ipos we are talking about only post ipo highs so what happens is uh, a stock list sets a 100 bucks and goes down to 20 30 40 rupees because of whatever the reason and once out of this correction it goes above 100 again that is the time when you want to start looking at this company maybe analyze this company in details a lot of examples will be there for this post ipo highs and and it's not always that this this pattern will be successful but wherever it is successful you will end up making two times three times kind of money in these kind of companies so again a very important model to keep in mind next slide abhishek so then there are certain softer aspects this this is often visible to the experienced investors in the market so any company that starts high, uh, increased transparency that you see in a company earlier a company not ready to talk to anybody not giving presentation not giving much details in the annual report suddenly they start giving out a lot of details in their presentations annual reports the management comes out on say tv or meets a lot of investors or they become very forthcoming in the agms also then this is often an initial phase of a bull market in that particular stock so in in common parlance many a times majak majak mein people talk ke isko market cap ka keeda chada hai so nothing wrong in that also 
if the market cap increases then you are also going to benefit as a shareholder so maybe it's a model worth considering another model is consistent promoter buying preferential issues during capex phase consistent buybacks nucleus software was one example where there were consistent buybacks over a period of maybe 5 7 years and during those periods of time the company there was not much growth visible in the company but the promoters kept on buying back kept on buying back and currently i think we are seeing the results then a company which has not paid dividends for a long period of time because of problems at the company starts paying out dividends that is one of the models we can keep in mind consistent buyback recent example has been of kaveri seeds kaveri seeds you see every year they come out with buyback there is hardly any growth to talk about in case of kaveri seeds but the management does buy back the stock and say at some point of time the company starts back on the growth track then these are the kind of companies which will go up a lot next slide please so now we have covered most of the mental models that i have seen in the market there will be many more besides these but uh, these are the ones that i have experienced as an investor and often utilize them to my benefit so those are the ones i have talked about now we'll come to specific case studies where some of them we have enjoyed the ride some of them we have missed them also a lot of them have been demonstrated in the written word on value picker also so you can go through them also so first case study was ajanta it was one of my earliest big winners so prior to 2011 and 12 the sales growth was 22% profit growth was 37% cagr this i remember distinctly because it was one of the first annual reports i read as an investor and the first thing i read about is in this presentation and i was amazed this stock was available at 5 pe 6 pe kind of valuations and i remember at that time i talked to donald at value picker and then i think it was donald who started the thread on value picker because at that point of time i don't know why maybe my thinking was not very structured or anything but if you see i think donald probably started the thread on ajanta on value picker and then the company kept on giving good results and the re rating happened from say around 5 pe to close to 35 pe 40 pe kind of valuation so over a period of 3 4 years and the stock price had gone up almost 6 60 times within the next 5 years so we were lucky to latch on to this pretty early on then but we could not uh, enjoy the full journey of 60 times personally i enjoyed 18 times but that i think in a initial phase of your investment journey is a pretty big thing next slide please abhishek <clears throat> see th this is an example which is not very often talked about so this was canfin home finance so this was a company which came to my attention in 2013 14 right before pm modi came to power and this was a company where book value was 220 rupees the stock price was at around it was ranging from 120 to 150 net npa was nil since many quarters and it was growing at a very sedate pace but then me being a new investor at that point of time my focus was that at least this company should quote at book value because this is a financial so my target was say 120 130 140 you buy it sit on it for some period of time it was it was a value buy kind of thing and my target was that if i get a price of around 220 i get 50% that was the initial thinking then i started digging into the company then the growth return to the company the government change at the center then this whole perception change and the new ceo breathed life into the company the stock price i think went up almost 30 times in next to 4 to 5 years I was lucky enough to latch on to it at around 140 150 bought more during the rights issue I think was at around 450 rupees and managed to sell it off at around what 1800 kind of levels and even from there the stock price doubled so that is the kind of wealth these multi baggers can create for you next is the case study of mayur unicota so it is a big player in synthetic leather so how this company came to my notice was that during post the 
uh, recovery phase from 2008-9, the stock price had gone up from 200 to 110, 20 to 110 kind of levels. And Mano Poddar bought almost 16,000 shares in the open market at 103, 104 kind of levels in 2009. And then I, I had newly read Peter Lynch and was very impressed about promoter buying from the open market. That was one of the models I was very keen on. So then I figured out these guys got already 72% stake. Why is he buying more? And then I started looking more into the company, found that it was a good company. One of my friends attended the AGM also, and he gave me the feedback that these are very good bunch of promoters and you should ride the full journey. So the stock price went up almost 40 times in the next five to seven years. All these were examples of stocks coming out of really bad bear market. So that is one thing that we need to keep in mind. You will not get these things very easily in all kinds of markets. Next case study is of Kaveri. So Kaveri used to grow at 30% CAGR, clean net, net cash balance sheet. And BT Cotton was introduced in as a product in the company in 2007. So there's a lot of concern about tax not being uh, paid by the company. But we got the clarification from the management that agri products were not taxable at that point of time. So that was not a concern. Again, the stock price went up 20 times in the next five years. You can follow the thread on Kaveri, Mayur, Ajanta, everything on Value Picker. Right from first post to last post, if you go through it, you can see the whole journey of that particular company. Next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so this is my favorite example, Loras Labs. So I talked about the CapEx problem that this company faced. And it started showing results from 2020 onwards. And after the first quarter of good results, the management did con call and was, gave very good management commentary. But people were not ready to believe the promoter because he had got uh, maybe four or five quarters of really bad quarters behind him and then suddenly he comes and talks big. Nobody is willing to listen to him. But at that point of time, we had figured out that there was this shortage in bulk drugs and we were quite lucky enough to latch on to this company. It, I think it made nearly five, five and a half times within two years for some of us. So, But again, here also there is this importance of exit once the growth slows down we are, we cannot forget that this is predominantly an api uh, bulk drug company and api basically is a commodity kind of business it is only because there was shortage in the market that this company enjoyed a lot of tailwind since then they have made investment into other segments also but as of now numbers are not coming through so it's still we'll still have to wait and see next slide Yeah, so this is a case study which is a recent one, Usha Martin. So it sold its commodity steel business to Tata Steel in 2020 and funds were used to retire debt. So this was an example which we had discussed since two years at Value Picker. A very good thread existed on this company. Now what happened was a lot of investors were focused. They, they did not read about the company completely. They should have known that there were two promoter families which were involved against each other. One of the promoter, Prashant Jawar group, was constantly selling in the market and the other group was running the business. And the picture was almost semi-clear because Usha Martin Wire Rope has been in business since long. And it is a global, at least it's a big dominant player in India. Now we are talking about it as a global leader also. But uh, what happened with the sale of the commodity steel business was that the margins were protected all throughout the cycle of the business because steel, steel commodity product prices are largely passed through in this wire ropes business. So this becomes a very sturdy business. So there's a lot of re-rating that has happened in this company. Then again, the softer aspects started playing out. Presentations came in, con calls started. This is a company where a lot of mental models fell into place. Even the technical aspects also. I'll come to the chart later on. Next slide, please. Yeah. 
Yes. So this is a, again a recent example of HBL power. I think I have talked a lot about HBL. We can afford to skip it. Anybody interested can read the thread on HBL power. Uh, this is time techno again here also i have talked about time technoplast so basically the product is they they have latched on to this uh, composite cylinder product for uh, uh, lpg and uh, now they are talking about manufacturing the same kind of product for uh, uh, this thing what's the hydrogen this thing so maybe if it plays out it plays out otherwise even now the valuation is uh, pretty cheap. Next slide, please. Again, this is a case study of Jammu and Kashmir Bank. So I think I shared the charts on value picker also probably. So here, this is also one of the PSU banks only, nothing new about it. But the different thing about this company was that after the abolition of Article 370, the Kashmir economy is in huge boom. Anybody who has been there will talk about the tourism that has been taking place there. And last conference call, the CEO talked about an aspirational net profit of 4,000 crores by FY28. And just to give a context, FY23 net profit was 1,300 crores. So you are talking about nearly three times profit in four or five years for a company which is available at 5 PE kind of valuation. Now, if actually these numbers are achieved, you just imagine what kind of stock price you'll be able to see. Maybe the PSU tech by that time probably will not mean as much as it does mean now, but uh, till date, the stock price has done amazing. And the stock price has gone up from say around 65, 70 rupees till from that time to 110 as of now, and still appears pretty strong. Next slide, please. So technical analysis, how to use to find out these multi baggers. So these are the kind of patterns that you can see and uh, multi-year breakouts, early stage rounding bottoms, saucer shape patterns, bottom triangles, all these things. But we don't need to participate in all these breakouts. You can wait for a clearer fundamental picture to emerge and even then join this uh, up trends and then also you'll end up making money. Next slide, please. So this is an example about NIIT. So this is a monthly chart. So you focus on the dotted line that is there on the chart. So the stock price crossed 170 rupees, which was a 20 year high in 2020. And me and some of my friends were wondering what is happening with this company because fundamentally just nothing was happening the results were poor everything there's just no no clue as to why this stock price has gone up to these levels and why it is expected to go up from here also so but then that is how it, these things sometimes happen so once crossed 170 the stock price had a consolidation around 170 maybe plus or minus 20 30 rupees for seven months and then the stock price took off, went up to 650. Then it went, it was a four, four bagger in four years. And not much fundamental information was available even at that point of time. Even now I cannot figure out too much about the company. So this was an example of NIIT chart. So the recent dip that you see is probably because of some kind of demerger or something. Next slide, please. So another example was Copran. So Copran again was a company that was discussed in details on value picker by when, when actual stock price was around 98, 100, 105 kind of levels. That was a multi-year resistance, 20 year high, 98 to 102 kind of levels. It crossed in 2020, went up to 146, again came down for a retest. And then in 2021, it went up three times maybe four times in two years and the profits followed afterwards. So that is something that we can see here. You can see the stock price then corrected also. And now again, start, seems to have started its up move. A lot of technical guys again have come up with very lofty targets, but we are not getting into this as of now, but we'll have to work on this company again. Next slide, please. Yes. So again, Usha Martin. So I was mentioning about this multiple mental models 
cycles playing out in the same company. So 47 was a 10 year high, 102 was a 14 year high, 154 was an all time high. You could have bought this stock at any point of time and still ended up making money from that point. And once you figure this out that, okay, it has crossed this 10 year high or 14 year high, the only thing you need to do is say, read the annual reports, maybe two, three years of annual reports, go through the presentation if the company does that. Or value picker itself is a wonderful resource. Somebody or the other has already started a thread on any company that you think about. And you can get all the details that are there. Next slide, please. So this is an example. I have marked all these important resistances. And these, mind you, these are monthly charts. So that has to be kept in mind. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So the recent example is Mukan Limited. So we straight away go to the chart because fundamentally I don't think there's anything I can make out as of now. But this is almost a 25 year high kind of level you can see. Now mind you, this is not a recommendation. This is just a mental model that you should focus on. And this is a starting point. Then you should analyze the company, maybe attend the AGM, meet somebody associated with the company, try to get an idea. What is happening at this company so that the stock price has broken out of all these high levels? Next slide, please. So this, this briefly is about the mental models that can be useful in finding multi-baggers. And just a disclaimer, any stock that has been discussed in this talk is for the purpose of example only. We do not recommend any of the stocks that have been discussed. Whatever stock you, you search or discuss or anything, please do your own due diligence. This, this whole presentation has been done with a view to uh, 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 provide a roadmap to uncover multi-baggers. I hope you, every one of you benefited from this and maybe some point of time I'll start a thread on value picker re related to this topic also. So. Thank you all for this patient listening. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So thanks, Sitesh Bhai, for this, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of marathon session, one and a half hours you spoke. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, let's take maybe uh, next 10, 15 minutes for some questions. Uh, there are a few questions. Let me just scroll up and see if there are some questions. And uh, let's see, we can ask. Thank you, messages. Okay. Uh, so first, let me just, how does one evaluate new management? In hindsight, it is easy to say, but does one wait and observe? And if so, for how long? So the, uh, see, if you are into this multi-baggers kind of thing, the picture initially is often quite hazy you will not be able to figure out a, the full picture in the initial phase of a stock's journey. So at that point of time, many a times you can keep your allocation low by a small amount of the stock. And then if, once the picture starts improving, you can scale up your positions. So that's how somebody can go about it. Management quality, many a times it's very difficult to ascertain, but what you can do is you can try to meet the management, try to talk to somebody at the company, maybe employees, maybe suppliers to the company or customers of the company. So they, this basically involves scuttlebutt. So that is how you try to figure out. And different ways to figure out the management. Okay, so uh, a sort of related question is uh, for balance sheet cleanup, I remember Rakesh Junjunwala investing in Yes Bank after it came under the new management uh, with Rana Kapoor. Uh, despite new management and infusion by marquee investors, Yes Bank has been a disaster. What caveats to watch for in your mental models to avoid such stocks? Uh, financials are a very tricky set of companies to monitor because what happens is growth comes front-ended and NPS come back ended. So here I think the important thing to figure out is uh, try to 
get into companies which have got very steady kind of growth expecting 30 40 kind of 30 40% cagr kind of growth from a financial for long periods of time is often difficult there will be only one of them say bajaj finance which has done it successfully till now and after a point i think that also will slow down because trees cannot go to this grow to the sky but uh, coming to yes bank i think the reputation of promoters was murky right from the beginning some people believed in rana kapoor some did not believe in him some of us stayed away from them and the thing is with companies in the financial sector say banks or npfcs you got a lot of options to choose from so if you are not very certain about one company try looking for another company there's just no compulsion to invest only in one company right okay so moving on to the next question how do you avoid anchoring bias that is do you buy your stock at a higher price if you have already purchased at a cheaper price yeah so that is what i talked about earlier so initially sometimes in a multi bagger the picture is not very clear early on so that point of time you keep your allocations low because not every time you will find a very clear picture right from the beginning sometimes you are lucky enough where you can figure out everything that okay this company is going to go through this track kind of thing but sometimes the results take some time to come about so those period there what you can do is after every rally there is the the some period of consolidation so during that maybe 6 weeks 8 weeks 10 weeks depending upon in each individual company so that is the time where you can rework your thesis see how things have played out according to your expectations and if you are, if you are convinced that okay this company is performing according to our expectation you can buy more the case in point was say hbl power earlier there, there was just only a narrative no results were there since almost in fact the first good set of results was in q1 before that hardly any results were there it was all about a story that was evolving that okay this company has got these kind of orders this that and after q1 results also there was time enough for somebody to buy this company the actual stock price rally started only after this uh, this uh, orissa train disaster so before that there was time enough for somebody to load up but then you have to have faith in the management faith in your own abilities of analyzing that company so that's how things go so one uh, one point that i want to add here uh, that i have probably learned from uh, it is by here is uh, one is uh, he can scale up down a position the other thing that that i find very interesting in his approach is he can <coughs> trade around a long term position so let me just you know take up maybe half a minute to explain what he does so let's say he'll buy uh, a stock x 100 shares uh, for the long term and and that share goes up you know 30% 40% in a week so what i've seen him do is he'll probably sell uh 20 shares and then wait for a pullback and then buy back at a lower price so you know that trading around the position so that overall in in the overall scheme of things his cost price uh probably goes down and uh his ability to hold on for a longer period is higher because he's able to uh sort of uh you know get intermittent profits in between so that that's something which is uh, uh you know which is very interesting and not uh, uh let me repeat not very easy for uh, people to do no that this i i will not prescribe for everybody basically Correct. i think the main question was about getting over the anchoring bias of, of the stock price so see that is something that that will you will encounter only for the first time you do it or maybe the second time you do it after that that is just a sort of mental inhibition that just immediately goes away so i also used to suffer from the same problem but uh, i think during the journey of loras or maybe even ajanta early on in my career i was able to buy higher up also because what happens is a, you buy a stock at 57p the stock price goes up the results come through again the stock price is again available at 57p even though it has gone up by 50% so there again it makes sense to buy more if if your position size allows it to you 
so okay. that is how it goes but it's basically a mental block only so you, it's pretty easy to get around it it's just that you have to make a strong mind and do it once or twice and then i think you'll get through it okay so next question uh, what is your typical day like how much time do you dedicate to equity research reading etc how much time do you dedicate to discussing with like minded investors on stocks so i wish i will discuss describe my day kuch nahi karta very lazy whole whole day i'll sit and do nothing <laughs> so my typical day is uh, one thing i think i would advocate to everybody is take care of your health because no matter how much money you make if you are not healthy if you are not fit then uh, you won't be able to be there to enjoy the fruits of your success so focus on some any kind of exercise that you enjoy on a regular basis so i enjoy swimming a lot we have got a very good swimming pool at our palace in baroda and i am almost a regular there go four five times a week and if it's not swimming then it's either walking or cycling or whatever i enjoy so that that that's something that starts my morning then around about market time i at least have a look at how the markets have opened how my stocks are doing there's no getting around that i am not of the bunch of people who never see their stock prices for days at a time or weeks at a time no it's not like that for me i i, I keep a watch on how my stocks are performing and then then basically it's all a routine kind of thing you plan your day you read whatever good books you have lined up or maybe watch your tv watch sports anything because being financially free has got its own perks you can do whatever you want with your time and your stocks will do your job so that is a very enviable position to be in but if you do your investing successfully i think no reason why people should not be financially independent it requires learning requires planning and i think it, it can be achieved if somebody with no financial background like me can do that i think a lot of people can aspire to do that okay so uh, the next question is on position sizing how do you do your allocations yeah so i am a pretty aggressive investor many a times right at the time of entry if i am convinced see i have got the benefits of techno funda kind of concept so i analyze a company also i analyze the chart also and if a lot of things fall in place a lot of mental models that i have discussed fall into place in a single company then i won't just hold back i'll just allocate 10% 15% of my portfolio right at the beginning and then see how it goes but here again there is no place for ego in investing if i see that the company stock price or the company is not performing according to expectation then there's just no harm in getting out of it or reducing your positions because in concentrated investing you cannot afford to be wrong for too too long a period of time otherwise you will be wiped out so you have to be humble in this market and market keeps on teaching you new lessons every now and then so you have to be able to figure out what the markets are trying to teach you okay uh, the next is uh, among so many mental models how do you rank companies across these mental models uh, or let me add like... this question from my side uh, do you yeah. uh, do you look at multiple models together or where there are more than one model uh, does that attract you more or how is that yeah so if you see the techno funda term itself actually there are two two models already have been fitted into it technicals and fundamentals and then fundamentals there are a lot of different models that you can consider so whenever i find three or four or five kind of models that are fitting into a particular company i'll just give you an example of say usha martin it crosses to a 10 year high of 47 when first the stock price came to my notice it was actually at 65 70 rupees one of my investor friends told me about the company now it had already run up but the picture was much more clearer when the stock price was at around 47 so i took my initial position there then 
uh, I read about the whole stake sale of the uh, commodity steel business and all the details. It was all available in the company, details in the company provided. So I just made calculations that, okay, this company has got 4,700 crores of debt. They are going to get 4,200 crores from the sale of this uh, commodity steel business. And this company will end up having only 400, 500 crores of debt, plus the cash flows will improve over a period of time. So the, the company at least will not fold up. It's not going to go bankrupt. That was the first assurance I was getting. And then the story kept on unfolding, going ahead. So I kept on buying from 70 to 100 rupees. I was a constant buyer. Because a okay. lot of models kept fitting into it. Okay, so probably I think you've answered or at least partially answered a part of the next question. So I'll ask you two more questions in one go. Uh, that is when once you identify a company, do you buy all in or do you invest once the result starts matching the narrative? That's one part. And second is, how about exits? How do you exit? Okay. So, uh, again, being a techno funder investor helps here a lot because if fundamentally I am convinced about a company and if the technical picture is not very clear, I will not go all out. I will buy a small token position and then wait for the story to play out or maybe stock price to go in my direction and then I'll increase my position. But wherever I am, everything fits in together, I'll be pretty aggressive in buying initially only. And then if the stock price goes down, then that's the pain you bear. Okay. Uh... And here again, you have to differentiate between your fundamental peak and pure technical peak. Because the next question will be what happens if your stop loss gets triggered in this position. So if it is my fundamental position, I will not be too worried about the stop losses and all. I will give it some more time. Okay. Uh, the next question is about uh, using stop losses. So how do you determine? Yeah. So, so first of all, it is a pure technical loss and how do you uh, determine the stop loss? See, basically in technical analysis, stop loss is of utmost importance. So there you define your risk reward up front. Say 10% of stop loss and 20, 30% of gains. That, that kind of equation you have to keep in mind. So a lot of people advocate this 816 kind of model. So 8% stop loss exit at 16%. And gains. So everybody has got their own formula for these kind of things. But that is only related to your technical positions. Wherever you are riding a position only based on charts, then only this is the kind of model you practice. In, in kind of positional bets, techno funda bets, probably you might use some more leeway to all these companies. Maybe say 30 week moving average or 200 exponential moving average in a purely fundamental position is a good level to watch out for. And coming to selling, so selling again, fundamentally it is all about froth. When you start seeing two, three years of earnings being discounted at current price, then maybe it might say make sense to at least reduce the position if not sell it totally. Technically, what we use is many a times we use RSI only for this purpose. So RSI going above 85, 90 on a weekly or a monthly time frame or any kind of RSI divergence that you can see on weekly or monthly time frame, then it, it makes sense to exit. One of the simplest models I have found to use is, say, these days we are seeing a lot of parabolic moves in many stocks. So there, a simple model you can use is whenever a stock price goes at twice the value of its 200-day exponential moving average. I have found looking at so many charts that most of the stocks find it very, very difficult to sustain the levels of two times its 200 exponential moving average. If it reaches there and stays for a few days, then maybe it goes either sideways or it corrects, whatever happens, but it cannot sustain at those levels for long periods of time. 
so if at all you want to sell or reduce your position that is a good level two times 200 day exponential moving year very simple easy to implement strategy good so uh, this is a this is a question that uh, you know is very topical for today or uh, or nowadays i uh, uh, you know something that i also probably would uh, ask you so in this time and age where there are exclusive returns to be generated almost on daily basis, for how long you wait for your company thesis to play out? Can you repeat that? I cannot. So, so basically, let's say you have bought a company based on whatever parameter hmm. and the stock is not playing out uh, you know, to uh, what as per your thesis. So how long will you hmm. wait for the this is to play out before sort of, uh, you know, taking a decision to cut it off. Okay. So it depends upon the time frame with which I have bought that particular company. So if it's a fundamental story, then maybe it will take a lot of time. We have given a lot of time to stocks like HPL, Usha Martin. They have not gone anywhere for maybe six months, 12 months. And we are still not worried, too much worried about it. But if, say, I am buying a stock on a, say, daily time frame for the next two months, three months, I will see the daily charts probably and buy it or maybe based on triggers which are there in the immediate near future. Then if it doesn't perform for next maybe two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, then I will just... And because what happens is by that time, we have already come across maybe three, four other opportunities. So we are all, me, maybe even Abhishek also, we are always running short of uh, funds to invest in because we are always there with three, four, five ideas, ten ideas at a time. And then there is a shortage of funds to invest in those companies. So either you reduce the allocation or you exit the stock if it is not moving much in your favor. More so because if, if you have bought it purely based on technicals. So actually you, are, you answered the last question, I mean the next question which was on uh, what do you do if uh, you know you don't have cash? So basically, that that was the answer. So the next uh, question is, uh, do you take on leverage to enhance returns? No, I have never taken leverage in my life because it starts affecting my sleep. So I value my sleep too much. Right. Okay. And the next question is. Uh, do you ever buy stocks only because they are highly undervalued or you always look for mental models first? Valuation, which comes first, valuation or mental models? Uh, undervaluation also is a form of mental model. So, I'll just give you an example. So, I have not invested in that company. It is actually in my watch list. So, I'll talk about a stock called City Union Bank. So, if you look at the price history of that particular company, I think the COVID lows were around what 100 kind of levels plus or minus 10 rupees. And it, it used to be a very fancy company. At one point of time, I think it was valued on the lines of HDFC Bank. It used to quote at three, four times book value. Now of late, they have suddenly fallen off the radar. The business has suffered, whatever the reason is there. But and it has got a 100 year track record behind it. It's a bank that is 100 years and more old. So it's not, not as if the bank is going to be, go bankrupt all of a sudden. But the current price is around 125, 126 last I looked a couple of days back. Very close to the COVID lows. And in comparison to that, a lot of other private banks have run up two times, three times, four times from the COVID lows levels. Now, there are definite reasons why this company is not doing well. I went through the conference call and the management is pretty honest. They said we have not done well. This quarter has not been good. Next quarter probably will not be good. But we expect the second half to make up for all the lapses of the first two quarters. Now, if you believe this management, the stock price is available at what? Around 1.2 times book, 10 PE. And at one point, of, you can consider it as a fallen angel kind of company. One point of time, it was a very fancy company. So that is the kind of undervaluation that is there even in the current kind of market also. You can take your pick and choose. If you want to play momentum, you can play valuation. 
So all kinds of things are available in this market. You you figure out what you are comfortable with, what you are good at, and practice that. Okay, so Hrithesh Bhai, with in the interest of time, and probably we are coming at to the end of two hours. I'll take one last question, uh, which yeah. is uh, how many <clears throat> stocks do you think an individual retail investor should hold so that they can keep track of their holdings on a regular basis? See, I have experimented. Uh, for me, concentrated investment is five to ten. And if I want to expand myself during bull markets, where I feel that I am missing this opportunity, that opportunity, so I allocate three percent, four percent to a particular stock, then I limit myself to fifteen or twenty at the most. So in my experience, I think fifteen twenty is the upper limit. Five to ten is probably. For somebody who is very confident about their bunch of companies, so maybe something like five to ten on the lower side, fifteen to twenty on the higher side. At the most, you can stretch it up to thirty. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, it, it is very close to you know my sweet spot. I think personally, between ten to twenty is a good number of stocks to hold. You are not too diversified. You are not too concentrated. Uh, so that's that's uh, you know what I personally feel. But uh, anyway, I think with that we'll come to an end uh, for today. Uh, Hitesh Bhai, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks and, for all the participants. Yeah, yeah, thanks and thank yeah exactly. Thank you all for joining uh, and and uh, staying on for two hours. Uh, thank thank you all. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you.